Hello everyone, um, my name is Michael Regina. I am an illustrator and a comic book artist and painter. And um, this is my first time ever really trying to do a tutorial video, but I wanted to um, take people through uh, how I work through a painting in Photoshop. Uh, something I've done uh, uh, in the past have been some paintings that I've um, done of Disney villains and um, Lord Voldemort and things like that and they always tend to get a pretty good response and I wanted to uh, share kind of what I've learned about making these paintings and uh, hopefully it will be helpful to you and maybe just talk about a few things along the way. So the first thing uh, what I've tried to do here is go ahead and uh, show you the, the drawing that I'm going to be using for the painting itself. Uh, I've started with this just to save you all the um, the the time of seeing me set up my composition and make sure all that's right and obviously there's a lot that goes into that but I wanted to really spend the, the time talking about the technical pieces of uh, turning this into a painting in Photoshop. I use Adobe Photoshop CS3. I have yet to upgrade my system but I uh, pretty much use basic brushes all the way across so hopefully you should be able to transition this as well uh, into your own setup. Now what you'll see is the first thing I've done is the, the whole painting is set up in black and white to begin with. Uh, one of the biggest things I learned in, in college was that the best way to make a painting is actually by getting your values correct over your colors and so on because colors don't necessarily convey the, the image as much as the values do. You can look at a black and white image and see very clearly whether the image is, um, is appealing or not and then color is really kind of that icing on the cake so to speak. So I always start with a, a black and white uh, drawing. Uh, the, the next step from there is I will start building up the values. So what I have over here is I have a gray uh, base layer. It's a middle tone of gray and then above that, let's actually just shut them all off so you can see I've got the gray base layer. I've got my early original sketch which has kind of been faded out but um, bring it back up and you can kind of get a sense of it. This was just a small sketch of my sketchbook. And then uh, on top of that I have the drawing that I've developed inside of Photoshop and now just a new layer that's set to normal that we're going to use to, um, to start building up the drawing. One other thing that I um, have, and you'll see a little bit differently here, um, I like to keep, this is my web comic or graphic novel I'm working on, but I like to keep reference of the character that I'll be using. So just usually do a Google search, uh, go to images, and I'm doing a portrait of Galactus from the Marvel Universe. So now I've just got a, a list of pictures that I can refer to if I need to, and just put that over here. I am working on dual monitors right now, so those uh, reference photos are actually over on a separate monitor at the moment. Now, the first thing I do when I'm uh, beginning to set up my painting is I have a kind of this weird charcoal brush. I'll see if I can't zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. But it has this nice grainy texture to it. Kind of resembles something more like a pencil or a... Um, piece of charcoal or something like that and this for whatever reason has been the brush that I've used uh, to begin setting up my drawings and paintings I guess I should say. Now I want to start to think about where is my light source coming. Uh, Galactus is obviously in space there's no necessarily true um, uh, true lighting source but what my plans are is in, the, in this background uh, this kind of nebulous thing that we see, that's actually going to be a, a nebula, actually, in space. And I may even add a planet or something along the way. We'll just kind of get to that as we get there. But um, I, I'm going to kind of have the light source coming from from this way on. So he'll be lit this side, and then this will be the dark side. Let's go ahead and erase those. And... Um, Let's get to work. I'm just going to bring my reference window back up here so I can see it again. I've got kind of a couple windows over here, so I apologize. All right, get myself situated on the other screen. Okay, here we go. So first thing I'm looking at is what is the value difference between his helmet and his face? 
and his helmet tends to be just a bit below a middle range. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. So usually I just go ahead and start filling in here. Now this, um, this charcoal brush that I'm using is set to um, I think uh, actually a pretty dark color or a dark tone I should say value and we're just gonna let that kind of be for now I can always adjust those things as I'm going now one of the nice things about Photoshop over something like a uh, piece of canvas or whatever and, and some people would probably call this cheating is um, the ability to make a lot of edits on the fly. So what I will like to do sometimes is just sort of get things laid in and then once they are in I'll, I'll do some adjustments to things as I'm going. So like right now we've got a, um, got a nice base laid in and I want to maybe actually bump that lightness up just a hair. So usually this is using the hue and saturation tool in Photoshop. Uh, if you're not in anything, if you're in any sort of color mode, going ahead and, and bumping the lightness up. So that'll get us to kind of where I want to be there. I'm going to go in here and add some of that tone. Now I'm just using the, the eyedropper tool to pick up local values and, and then put them in. All right, now going into things like um, reselect this. Let's start adding maybe some shadows to all of this. Just kind of building this up a little bit. Now, what I also tend to do is I like to keep as much as possible in my layers uh, separated. So what I mean by that is I want the um, I want Galactus to be on his own layer. Uh, this is actually going to be Silver Surfer kind of swooping in and around this corner. Then you'll have the background. And I want those things to be separated if I can because it gives me the opportunity to easily switch back and forth between the two and make um, the appropriate edits. So let's see. Now hopefully this, this video in general will just be helpful for those who are wanting to learn how to paint in Photoshop. I'm by no means an expert, but I, I really have transitioned out of doing more traditional paintings in the past into really falling in love with, with working inside of um, with working inside of a digital means like this. And there is a, a definitely a learning curve if you're coming from one to the other, I think. For me, it was really getting past the technical limitations of the programs. You kind of get so used to working in a, um, you kind of get so used to working with traditional tools that using anything other than that can kind of feel strange. Now, what I'm doing now is um, going ahead and trying to maybe start adding some uh, some of the light values that are going to be in the skin. I'm just trying to start getting a nice sense of just the difference in um, in values between his helmet and and his flesh that kind of comes through this piece. Also, want to make his eyes stand out a little bit more even now. And the whole point of doing this is to really make the the painting start to feel complete as early as possible. Um, what that means is, like, most of what we recognize in paintings has nothing to do with the the, the you know, little brush strokes that we get so excited about where we get really close up on something. We get really excited about, oh, look at the texture they dropped in here. That uh, In a traditional painting, look at how thick the, the impasto is on the paint or something. Really what we tend to get drawn to has more to do with uh, the general feel of that painting, like the overall the overall appearance of it. And that's really what you what you want to go for in your earliest phase is you want to have a painting that registers as appealing as early as possible. So 
So here I'm just starting to build up um, some of these value differences uh, so we can start to see what the painting looks like. You'll notice I'm working quite small. Um, this is absolutely something I would encourage other people to be doing as well. Uh, if you've not done this before, um, I actually do this on a couple of ways. I'm not doing it at the moment because the, the separate monitor, the, the Google Hangout menu that I'm using is portraying a smaller version of my screen, but uh, it's a good idea inside of Photoshop to open up two windows, to show you what that kind of means. Like you can, um, you can essentially have up, I've actually got a Galactus desktop background uh, just for inspiration. And actually, I, I've been doing this painting because of a um, recommendation by uh, illustrator and cartoonist uh, Mike Mayhack posed this as a potential subject, and I love Galactus, so I was like, yes, let's do that. But what I uh, was saying was it's a good idea to have two windows open, if possible, and one way I would work often is I would have like a smaller version of the painting up here and then a bigger version down in the um, in the base of the the image when you if you kind of use a control plus or command plus in Photoshop it it'll um, it'll it blow up the window for you but the idea being that you have some way of having a small version of the painting and a larger one. The smaller version of the painting gives you an idea so that you can see the the big picture issues with your painting. The nice thing is uh, every stroke that I make on it it translates to the bigger window so they both of them are workable so you can paint on here and, and it will transfer but so this is more of a, a means of being able to see your images better. You can do this by going into window and then arrange, and then new window for Galactus uh, PSD. Uh, it'll basically it's under window, arrange, and then new window. That'll open a separate window. I actually have it hot keyed though. But since I have my small window on the other screen, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this extra window and go back. <clears throat> All right, so let's continue with just building up some of the value here. What I like to do as I'm working is I one of the hot keys in Photoshop when you're using a brush is the alt button on your keyboard. The alt button on your keyboard will snap to and out of the color the um the sorry, the eyedropper tool, which allows you to pick up the local color or value. And so what I'll do to build up transitions is I'll often pick up the local value and then continue working the image from there. This allows things to uh, tend to feel a little bit more cohesive rather than separated because you're picking up values that already exist within your image rather than um, plundering your, your palette to find newer, newer colors. I'm just trying to think through that. One additional thing that you can use inside of Photoshop, and I don't do it a lot, but I'm getting the sense that I want to do it a little bit here, is to use the different uh, layer modes. So what I've done now is I've created a new layer, and I'm going to set that layer to multiply. Multiply essentially um, decreases or knocks down the value and uh, potential tone uh, and saturation of a, of a local color. So what I'm doing with this is I have a, a, a layer set to multiply. It's set at 100% right now. And then I have an airbrush that is set to uh, like a 50% opacity. And I'm just picking up a, a base gray and I'm using that to kind of quickly brush over the image. And if you'll notice, what it's doing is it's creating a a, um, a, a shading, a shadow gradient, and that's how I create my shadows and my paintings. I tend to use it sparingly, but um, that's how I get it done. And when I'm in the early stages of my paintings, I, I tend to have a much larger buildup of layers that is going that are going to occur because I'm sort of 
piecemealing this painting one step at a time and giving myself the ability to go back in and easily adjust things. One thing I want to go ahead and do here is one of the parts of this painting is Silver Surfer here. And um, I want to go ahead and just start to indicate him and the values that are going to come with him right now. Just real kind of thick, heavy brushes. And then at this stage, again, all we're really looking for is uh, building up an image from the, from the ground up. Really not worried about the detail of the Silver Surfer. We'll get, that, get to that later. All right, so returning to Galactus. Now, uh, on top of this multiply layer, I want to go ahead and create a new layer for working on Galactus because if I were to do anything down here, I'm sorry if some of this is basic for you guys, but uh, it'll still bump the value, but it bumps the value as it um, as it's already being impacted by the multiply layer. So I, I usually like to work on top of things rather than underneath them. So I just created a new layer that sits on top of the multiply layer so that I can start adding some additional details here. And let's see. <clears throat> All I really want at this phase is I want to be able to pull back, see the image, for what it's becoming and feel happy with that. There's a second step which I'll detail in more, um, I'll, I'll go into them in more detail coming up in the next video where I'll begin going through and actually starting to work up the image and, and start developing it a little bit further. I have a number of steps that I do before I actually start jumping in and adding color and detail and uh, Either fortunately or unfortunately for you, it's still a little ways out. Not a ton, but I don't suspect we'll get through too much this evening. But hopefully what you'll start to see is the painting is starting to come together. I'm just going to come back here. Let's see. Hmm. I want to knock back some of these things here in the background. So what I'm going to do, instead of using my airbrush, I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing here. Now, what I'm actually doing, you'll notice this is a brush that's just um, kind of continuously is pushing a value backwards. I'm not sure if you where you could do this, but one of the things I, I've done in Photoshop is I take a basic brush. Uh, you can change the opacity up here on the brush itself to like a 50, I, I keep it at 54% and then a flow of 50% and then the mode, just like in the layer, you can change the mode of the brush to different modes and those uh, modes have their own impact on what you're actually laying down. So I actually created a shadow brush using uh, you know, the 54% opacity on the brush, flow at 50% and then bumping the multiply, uh, changing the mode to multiply. That allows me to then come in here and um, you'll see it, it pushes the values backwards on the um, on the existing values on the layer. So it's a nice way to build up uh, your shadow layers with and be able to use the existing information that's already on the page rather than you having to go in and select uh, select a new color. Excuse me, I'm getting past a little bit of a cold. All right. We're starting to get there. Things are starting to come together just a little bit. I'm starting to feel pretty good about some of the uh, some of the things that are happening on the page. 
I want to take that same multiply layer I've already made now for the gradients on Galactus. I'm going to use that multiply layer to start knocking back some of the pieces of like his helmet. Shadows I know are going to be a part of it. Okay. I guess while I'm doing some of these autopilot things, I want to talk just a little bit about this process of learning and, and doing these uh, these paintings. When I, I actually didn't start teaching myself how to paint digitally until last year, I, I actually discovered, uh, like many other people, the Warm World Saga, uh, which is a fantastic webcomic, and if you're not reading it, you should be. But uh, I was really just blown away by seeing someone who was painting a comic book and it just was so gorgeous and I knew that in Photoshop I really had no idea how I was how I could even get to something remotely close to what he was doing I knew how to paint in, in real life but I didn't know how to paint you know in a computer and so I um, used that as an opportunity to go okay well let's let's actually learn how to do this and one of the great things, and you probably already know it since you're here at my here watching this video about the internet, is just being able to find, you know, through video searches and so on, um, create video tutorials. And so I just spent a lot of time doing that, especially if you're no longer a student in a university setting or something like that. You'll often find that you really have to do this on your own. I Meaning, get excited about things, start learning about things on your own, and it is the most important part about growing as an artist. Is because we never really do quit uh, learning, and we're never really a, and stop being a student. Some of us like to think we are. Those tend to be the the artists that don't really get where they're hoping to go. I think. So if you're if you're in the beginning of this process and trying to learn how to paint, I would just really encourage you to seek out as much information as yourself as you can and what that can often look like is maybe it means going to the museum and looking at paintings and, and taking notes not just going and looking but you know either bringing a notepad with you and and taking um, visual notes and little sketches or it could mean uh, excuse me I was coughing there. It could mean um, doing a little doodle while you're there, just jotting down notes about things that you saw. One of the best ways I found to learn, and this was probably the biggest thing that, that really bumped me from having no idea what I was doing in Photoshop uh, painting to actually starting to do something of a semi competent level, was just copying other people. And what that would look like was really just pulling an image from the internet that I liked and doing a, a copy of it. Not as hard as you would think, but the nice thing about it is it really forces you to start to um, work out the problem that the artist has created and solved already. So, you know, you may see something in a painting and you're really amazed by maybe how well they lay down the textures or maybe you're amazed by how they um, composed a shot or the just the brush strokes that they're using that's all stuff that you can really begin to understand if you if you copy another artist's painting because you literally have to figure out how to make that system do what they did so you can see here it's starting to get to come together just a bit say just a bit but I'm actually pretty happy with it so far what I am wanting to look at though is some of the references I've taken you know, note of here I'm a little bit concerned about his nose and just making sure I haven't missed anything and in, in how to present that kind of discovering that there is an opportunity here to make that a little bit better so I'm 
Okay, so let's go ahead and start trying to do that. What I'm finding on uh, some of the references I found is there's a, a nice little pattern that gets started here. The hard thing with Galactus, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but people draw his headdress like there is no apparent, I guess no apparent uh, set in stone way that his his head looks <laughs> like this little helmet, this goofy helmet that he wears. It's There's so many different versions of it. So I'm just doing my own version, compiling the components from all the different versions I've seen to something that I think is kind of cool and impressive looking. It also keeps that old school Marvel feel that really makes me want to draw him and, and paint him in the first place. Alright, so we're starting to, again, just add some detail to this. An additional trick that I like to do, um, and, you know, forgive me because you guys are probably about to see a, a nice bit of fun here, is to actually rotate your canvas. Go ahead and save this real quick. But you can flip your canvas uh, horizontally, and what that does is it gives it a mirror effect on the image that you're working on. This is really helpful in that it helps you pick out a lot of potential um, uh, potential proportional problems with your faces that you're drawing and, and other things that you're doing. You, your eye sees the information in a different way. So there's a pretty good chance that when I flip this, we're going to look at some things and go, that doesn't quite look the way we'd like, but let's go ahead and do it. I actually have this programmed as a hotkey as well. <clears throat> My computer's a little bit older, so it does uh, take it a second just to do this. Very much would like more RAM on my computer. <clears throat> the nice thing is, though, once you, you do do it, you, you should be able to flip back and forth a bit quickly. Apparently not. Let's just go ahead and cancel that. Undo and redo, though. But you'll notice here you can start to, to get a good sense of whether or not any um, proportional issues are really starting to be glaring. So that's what I want to look at here. One thing I'm noticing is that I've just given his headdress a, a different proportional approach. So let's go ahead and touch that up a little bit. I think I also want to give it eye holes a bit more of a slant, give them maybe more of a menacing appearance. Galactus is also um, tricky creatively to draw because most people's heads, you know, they kind of do like here's a nose and here's a mouth and then here's the head and uh, oops, there's a big forehead. But then it sort of slopes back. That's not so much the way Galactus works. Galactus works like, here's the nose, here's the head, mouthpiece, eyes, and then this thing happens. And it's like this gigantic <laughs> friar hat or something. Which, I mean, I don't mean that to, to pick on the design. Galactus is far and away my favorite Marvel villain character, but uh, where it poses a problem in, in making sure I'm understanding my image is this piece right here, because the, the hat, helmet actually is going in a straight uh, diagonal approach rather than you know sloping back here like it might normally do. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Again, just looking at, is there anything that's happening on this page, or on this painting so far, that I think needs to be adjusted from a drawing perspective? Remember, my the way I approach my paintings is I like to have the drawing and the um, the drawing and the values all pretty much good to go. So, looking at this here, I'm pretty content with what I'm seeing. Let's flip that cam, let's go ahead and save it, and then flip the canvas back. Again, I'll take it just a moment to, to reload this. <clears throat> I 
All right, so there we go. The nice thing is once you flip it back, usually once you address those problems that were that you, you might have picked up on the last time, the image usually looks much better for it and more solid as a whole. There's not a whole lot else I, I think I want to do at this phase of the painting. This will probably be where I'm leaving. But uh, again, the, the big thing I want to leave on this video as far as a way of just conversation about um, developing your own artistic styles and all would be to really get outside of yourself, especially if you're trying to learn, and push yourself to discover um, any uh, new artist that you might come across or something like that that can help you see art differently. And if you're doing it in a computer, Again, remember, one of the best things you can do is, is try copying that, that painting in the computer. And you may even really want to try, rather than copying a digital painting, maybe copy some old traditional paintings. The first things I started copying were actually John Singer Sargent paintings. He's my favorite uh, painter. And I, I thought that that was one of the most helpful exercises I've ever done because I learned what brushes helped me achieve the look I wanted, what brushes... Um, how I could get the blend uh, blending the way I wanted it to that matched that painter that I appreciated so much. All right, everyone. Um, I'm going to leave it here uh, at this phase. And what I will try to do is the next time I sit down to work on this, I'm going to start just from the very beginning of, of where we left off. I'm going to try not to actually be working on this painting unless I'm recording it for all of you. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you'll share it if it was. And um, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll do my best to address them in the next video that I do, um, which will you know, probably be in the next day or two here. I've got a couple other projects that need some addressing, but um, please feel free to uh, drop me a line. Uh, you can get to my artwork if you go to michaelereginacom That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L. E, the letter E, Regina, R-E-G-I-N-A, dot com. That'll get you to my personal uh, portfolio site. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the comic I'm working on, you can visit that by going to adamsvillecomic.com. So that's A-D-A-M-S-V-I-L-L-E, comic, dot com. Appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me this evening. Just one last look at where the painting is so that you can see what work we've accomplished and um, just to take it all the way back to show you where we came from, this was the drawing we started with. And then just building up on the image uh, to where we are at the moment. So have a great evening, everyone. Thank you for taking some time and, and um, watching me paint. And I look forward to hopefully talking with you all in the next video.